Hey, Dr. Robert Green here with Conceptions, here to talk to you about something really exciting, what we call a duostem protocol, which is one of our newer ways of trying to help some of the patients that have been told they had a lower prognosis for IVF, meaning that there was an expectation or a previous experience of getting a lower number of eggs or embryos to transfer than what they're hoping to create to complete their family. So at Conceptions, we've had one of the highest success rates in the country for several years now. And along with that responsibility, we've seen a large influx of patients that have had a less than ideal outcome. And that's really caused us to, to look for more creative ways to try to improve patient outcomes. And over the last couple of years, we've noticed that there were better outcomes in people that were doing cycles closer together. This is what's now become more popularly known as a duostem protocol. And duostem protocol has different meanings in different places. So I'm gonna to talk to you about the way this protocol works here at Conceptions, and it might be different at other places. But first of all, what a duostem protocol refers to is not really the actual combination of medications that someone's on. It's really trying to plan two egg retrievals within a fairly short time span from each other. Now this is the exact opposite of what's traditionally been done in IVF. So I wanna start by giving you a bit of historical perspective. And this diagram makes the point that women have uh, markedly fewer eggs by the time they hit puberty than they actually had when they were actually a fetus within their own mom. And as you could see, the rate of egg loss is much slower than most people actually believe. And I explain to people all the time, you know, as, as fertility rates drop, most people assume it's because there are fewer eggs. But the reality is a woman is releasing one egg a month, whether she is fertile at 40, fertile at 35, or fertile at 25. So it's really the quality of the eggs that's really changing over time because on any given month, there's typically one egg that's available. Now what this image is depicting here is the timeline for how long it takes an egg to mature. At any given moment, the vast majority of a woman's eggs are dormant, meaning that they're alive, but they're not very metabolically active. Now the time it takes for an egg to go from being dormant to being ready to compete in that final stage or group of eggs that are gonna be chosen uh, with, for possible ovulation, that time period is roughly three to four months. So one of the things that we typically include in any standard IVF cycle is what we call a priming phase, meaning that before we start to stimulate the ovaries to try to get as many eggs as possible to be mature, we want to try to take some steps to optimize both the number of eggs available and the quality of those eggs even before we start the stimulation process. But one of the things that we realized Couple of, several years ago is that while we're doing what we're doing to optimize the group of eggs that we're going to be recovering, we're also having an even greater impact on the next several groups of eggs that are in line. And it was the realization of that fact that helped formalize the Duostim protocol. Now, this diagram here is showing why this is something that's so new and so different from what most people are used to hearing. This diagram is showing how the menstrual cycle is depicted in eight current medical textbooks, showing that the traditional way that, that uh, physicians are taught to think of the group of eggs that are maturing is that there's one wave each month, and that from that wave, there's typically in a natural cycle, one egg that's selected, and that that entire group of eggs are lost, and then there's not another wave that shows up until the next month. Now, having trained myself in Southern California as a surfer, I realized a long time ago that 
sometimes you might miss a wave, but that might actually put you in a better position for the next wave. And this is what we understand today, is that on any given month, yeah, there is one dominant group of eggs that we tend to focus on, but there are also secondary and tertiary groups of eggs that may not be quite ready this month, but they might be ready within the next few weeks. And it's that realization that helped prompt us to start to move forward with what's called a duo stem protocol, trying to help get two retrievals done fairly close in time without having to reprime and to see that we actually would achieve a better outcome, meaning either a higher number of eggs or better quality embryos or oftentimes both. Now this was a study that was published last year at the International Fertility Meeting in Europe called ESHRAE. And this was showing their version of a duo stem protocol. And they were following 300 patients that met criteria for being qualified as, and I apologize for the terminology, but poor responders, meaning that they weren't responding well to traditional stimulation protocols. And what they did is they took these 300 patients, they randomized 100 of them to the duo stem protocol, and the other 200 uh, patients stayed on the standard. And what they found is that with the duo stem protocol, there was a 31% increase in having a transferable blast. So there, I'm sorry, they doubled the, the number of, of patients that had a transferable blast. So that with the conventional protocol, 14% of their patients had a, a blast assisted transfer. With the duo stem protocol, that number more than doubled to 31%. And we were already in the early stages of formalizing our duo stem protocol. And I wanna share with you some of the data that we have here at Conceptions. Now, first of all, <clears throat> what a duo stem really means is that within a fairly short period of time, and typically that would be somewhere between one and three weeks after an egg retrieval, the patient is prepared for a second wave of stimulation. So in other words, you go through a traditional priming phase, you go through a first egg retrieval, and then within a week to three weeks, you go through a second wave of stimulation. And <clears throat> the idea is, is that with the second stimulation, you're dealing with a group of eggs that are already more advanced in their ability to respond, and sometimes even having improved egg quality. Now, the individual protocol should still be tailored to each patient's unique underlying uh, testing. So there isn't one standard protocol of what combination of meds that we use, but the duo stem really refers to the timing between transfers. And what we've found, we've now put 55 patients through this protocol. And first of all, one of the things that's most remarkable every one of the patients that were placed on this protocol had retrievable eggs. Sometimes it was in the first cycle, sometimes it was in the second cycle, oftentimes it was both. Uh, we did find a trend that there would tend to be a higher number of eggs in the second uh, retrieval than in the first, but that was not universally true. The other thing that's amazing is that we only found five of the 55 patients did not have at least one transferable blastocyst. So the point is, is that most people not only had eggs, they were able to develop blastocysts, and we're finding that 80% of those that had a blastocyst to test had at least one blastocyst to transfer. And so basically this represents you know, essentially about 45 patients that were otherwise only given the opportunity to try to conceive with a donor that instead were able to move forward with much greater confidence. And many of those patients, I'm pleased to tell you, are pregnant at this time. Bottom line is, is the duo stem protocol is not a perfect solution. It's not gonna work for everyone, but it clearly gives an opportunity to people that otherwise wouldn't have had a chance to try with their own eggs. 
one of the things we're starting to do now that the number of patients we've had going through this is increasing is trying to differentiate different types of patients in order to try to better figure out who is most likely or least likely to respond to a duo stem protocol. And the bottom line is, is people that have a lower prognosis don't all fall into one category and trying to understand when this is a better option or when we could try this, but we want people to lower their expectations. That's kind of the direction that the next phase of the research is going. Anyway, thank you very much for taking the time to listen to this brief uh, presentation on duo stem protocol. Hope you help, it helped uh, you understand what this is about and maybe gave you something to think about and discuss with your fertility provider.